Crusader Kings and fans of a, a, a quite frankly staggering amount of murder at this stage. Welcome to the adventures of uh, somehow Emperor Cannoli, the devil of the Byzantine Empire. 79 years of age. I wanted to check his kill count before we begin here because 43 characters, my god, and a lot of those were children. This man is a monster. He's, he is the devil walking the earth. Now, uh, I should clarify today, of course, we all know Emperor Kanoni. He's getting up there in years a little bit. He's 79 years of age. His mind is going to be slowing down a little bit. He's only got, sadly, 44 intrigue these days, which is quite pathetic. We've all got to admit. I, in real life, uh, have been awake for a long, 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 long time. It's 5.30 a.m. Trying to record a little bit in advance so I can finish my real life stuff. Building the new office and getting that all sorted out and, and things. Basically preparing to be moving over there. So I've got to give myself a little bit of a buffer. Um, hence why I'm recording so terribly very early. So it's role playing because he's old and his brain slowing down. And I'm tired and my brain has um, pretty much ground to a halt at this stage. So to be fair, he might be, might be leaps and bounds ahead of me. However, uh, things are relatively calm and settled because of course you remember yesterday um it was very heavy on the round management yesterday but of course that's an unfortunate side effect of being a, a very suddenly taking one of the largest and most complex realms in the entire game so uh we've reorganized all of byzantium into uh kingdoms which uh, people were kind of debating whether or not that was the right play, especially over in Discord. Somebody saying, you know, would it not be better to have 50 dukes rather than 10 kings, for example? 10 kings with, uh, or with, with five dukes each under them or something like that. Ultimately, there's actually less troops that these guys can pull from at this level because, of course... Those dukes don't give them 100% of their levy size to their liege, which is now these people. Um, whereas, if all those 50 dukes, again, going back to them, a very loose example, joined a faction against me, they'd be able to commit 100% of their troops. Now, these kings, of course, are far more influential. They have much more power. They actually get a massive amount of taxes and yada, yada, yada. So, that it, it's kind of up for debate. But in terms of realm management, with this particular character, this is infinitely easier because we've only got to give out six gifts now rather than gifts to all of those dukes we can sway uh you know particularly troublesome characters and we've only got to do that a few times but we could befriend them we could befriend all of these people very very easily and very quickly so it does make things a lot easier for cannoli and i think it would make things easier for savalum as well the enormous mountain of a man that he is because ultimately did he get the crusader trait Ooh, because of course i sent him leading our troops that works out pretty well huh of course i meant to do that <clears throat> so um oh Aspiring Blade Master. Oh, cool. When did he get that? I meant maybe a Battlefield Jewel or something like that. Um, yeah, no, this is going to be a lot easier for, of course, Savalon to manage too, because they're never going to be able to match his troops. Um, and, and especially not with him leading them. My god, he's up to 46 prowess. I have to check quickly on the character finder. In fact, we could check the base game character finder for this rather than uh, the more comprehensive one. Let's have a look then. Who is the best entry character in the world but of course it remains cannoli significantly significantly above the other guys these guys are again probably focusing on intrigue i'd be very surprised if they're not you probably schema or um intimidation focus fair enough plus two he still leaps and bounds ahead of him i want to sort by prowess if we can see that i want to find out who's the strongest warrior in the world this guy what are you a 58 year old maharaja called the fear eater Oh uh, my god, uh, he looks like he eats fear. 62 prowess. My god, man. Gifted duelist is giving him a total of, of plus 12 there. Scale armor, Hastaluda, Tamil, uh, his culture gives us plus one by default. Chivalry focus, stalwart leader. Wow. He is insane. I mean, I, I genuinely thought that Savalon would be at the top of the list. And of course, he's second place, which is pretty damn good. This guy is a monster, like once in a lifetime. The fact that he's AI too is insane. If a player did that, okay, it's still impressive, but this is just nuts. Holy shit. So really, we're doing insanely well, both both in terms of Savalum. Actually, in terms of Marshall, how's he doing? He's not actually terribly bad. Like, he's not amazing, but he's certainly in the top, like, 5% of Marshall rulers across the world. Maybe top 10%. Yeah, 22. We can certainly we can certainly round the edges off uh, when we end up playing as him here. So today, I've got a silly goal. Because, I mean, look, the realm is pacified. If succession happened now, it would be one of the smoothest successions ever. This guy would step in to a realm of people who loved lo would have loved their predecessor, right? Or loved uh, Cannoli. They are also all Catholic. So we've got no religious tension. We'll just slowly start converting things over. 
Somebody floated a very silly idea. It's something for us to do in the background, of course, while we try and pacify the uh, Mongol Empire on our border. And that very silly idea, and I love this so much, is Mend the Great Schism. Now, more specifically, um, the person who suggested it, Terminia Turk, said, uh, I'd see the decision for Mend the Great Schism. Seems like an interesting goal if you end up with a particular religious character again. Can I float a different suggestion? The original Crusader Kings 2 series, the original Brother Labaget series with the Carling Dynasty, the last Carling, uh, I believe Brother Labaget. No, he was like a very, very, very pious man. I think we ended up mending the Great Schism as a, a very religious descendant of Brother Labaget. What if Cannoli the Devil is the one that mends the Great Schism? Now, that sounds ridiculous. Imagine going from being known as the Devil to the ecum Ecumenist? I suppose, it, obviously, like Ecumenical. I don't really know how you would pronounce that. Ec ec yeah, Ecumenist, I guess, is right. It would be absolutely insane. I mean, what a goddamn flex. Literally, goddamn. When you've got this monster of a man being the one to unite the religion. What a slap in the face of God. What he has assassinated every man, woman, and child on the face of this planet. Now it's time to assassinate God himself. That's right. We're going full Final Fantasy with it. All we would need. I say all we would need as if this is a minor thing to do. Antioch, Jerusalem, Alexandria. Now, when it says you completely control that, it doesn't mean we need the kingdom of Jerusalem or, or we need to control Egypt or anything like that. We just need to control that particular county. And it just so happens that this particular man here has the ability to conquest any county in the Mediterranean for the next seven years. It comes full circle, my friends. All we would need to do is convert Antioch, Jerusalem, Alexandria. Now, that wouldn't be too unfathomable it would be very difficult to pull off i will admit because as you can see they're trying to convert byzantium 24 years i mean it's not an easy task we could go to war and quite frankly stomp anybody we wanted the big problem is currently jerusalem is under the mongol empire it's a monumental task and, and i think if anybody was got look I, I just want to do it for the flex would this guy be interested in doing that that's a great that, that is a great question probably not I, I feel like he's been he's been very manipulative of the papacy especially who have basically again paid for us to live in his home without any challenge or any threat would he be the type of guy to pursue this maybe not but maybe start laying the foundations for it at the very least though it would be an enormous flex he's he's, he's 80 the man is 80 years of age. He's not going to be able to pull that off. Not in the many, the amount of years it would take to convert them all over would be, uh, you know, like multiple lifetimes, I think. At the very minimum, what we can do, of course, is bring back Crete and Cyprus. But I, I think we will focus on... I think we'll focus on Mongolia for now. I think we need to make sure that they are kept under un, under under heel a little bit because this is, this is frightening. We could totally kneecap his dynasty by killing air after air after air. Oh, they count as too far away to interact with. What What is what is going on when this does this? Because this isn't the first time we've seen it, right? The Byzantine Emperor's children were down, supposedly, at this very south part of the map. Is there something going on with that, where they just, like, travel to the other side of the world as, like, some sort of event? I'm not really sure. Very bizarre. Again, not the first time we've seen the primary air of an empire dis disappearing off to the other side of the planet. What's your succession, then? Tervel Tura... I mean, the thing is, we need to kill this guy, divide his realm up, because it's partition, right? High partition, that's the real... So the oldest child takes the lion's share, and then the rest goes to the children. If we kill this, if we put a seven-year-old in charge of the Mongol Empire, they're going to rip themselves apart. We would have nothing to worry about. So maybe we change plan here from fabricating hooks to... Or just do both, honestly. Wait the hell not. Let's just go with both. We'll either keep him in our pocket while we get this murder plot going, or if we're caught trying to murder him, we've got the hook on him or something like that. Child of my dynasty. This is Savalum's child, Savalum. Oh, and again, he is that. He's the same. He's just another clone. Handsome, genius, and giant. I see why you've named him Savalum. <laughs> I guess we'll just keep it then. Why not? That seems fair enough. So I couldn't remember what I named this, uh, what are they called again? Accolade. I couldn't remember what I called this accolade the first time around. I've renamed it to the Shadow of Sardinia because I think that's a bit more appropriate. I think I called it the Devil of Sardinia before. Either way, it didn't save and he was called like the Terror of the Farmlands, um, which 
to be fair, it's, it's quite frightening, but not quite as frightening as the Shadow of Sardinia, right? Um, okay, we can pardon our vassals. Am I going to do that? Should I do that? Give me a reason to do that. I guess we'll do it just to make our likers a bit more. Negotiate alliances with your grandson. Now, this kid, I think, is going to be real trouble. So I think we're going to get rid of him at this point. Cornetto has served his purpose. He has done his job. We're going to kill him off. And then his younger brother, Simachu Carling, a kid that is intelligent, handsome, and more importantly loves us, can take over instead. This kid will never forgive us. He's probably got whisperers in his ear. This lady is, is almost certainly telling him, you know, he needs to manifest destiny, overthrow his evil grandfather for the orthodoxy or whatever else. I'm not interested in that nonsense. We're just gonna we're just gonna trim the the loose ends of that plot a little bit. Ooh, and we've succeeded. He had something to hide, so no need for the tyranny or anything else. There we go. He tried attempted murder. That's a good hook to get. Very nice. What do we want to do with that? Uh, out of interest, if I demand payment for it, how much will you pay me? Um, in fact, I can't even demand a payment for it. I wonder why not. It's a cultural thing, perhaps. Demand payment. Um, oh, we're at war. Oh, reasonable. Yeah, no, we're, we're obviously joined our war in, a def in defense against that. What about the crusade? Do you want to do something with that? Technically, we contributed. We threw all of our levies at that, and they got ground up. That's, of course, how Savalum, Savalum uh, Senior, Savalum the Older, got the crusader trait. Honestly, I think we'll just mind our business. We'll mind our business. We'll build up a little bit. What can I do with Constantinople? Then the ruin is indestructible and not fall into decay. We still don't have any ruins decision, so I'm still not sure that's working, sadly. Is there anything else we can do with this man? Honestly, maybe not. I think we just keep stability, and we prep the round for Sevelum at this point. I don't want to write him off, but what else can we do? What else can we do? We could dismantle the HRE. Could I do the same thing again? Shit, maybe we could. Because you, you feel fine. He feels as healthy as he did 40 years ago, so why not just send it? Emperor Norbert. Who's in line of succession here? Prince Slavabor. Prince Pator. Uh, Prince Pator, are you married? You are. You are. You're married to one of the sisters from Shrek. Um, she could probably get murdered, I think. Then we simply allow us to introduce ourselves. We'll marry him off to a family member. I'm sure I'm which we've got. We've got many, right? Surely we've got lots. She's, she's, she's betrothed. Uh, that's right. She's already married. You're betrothed. You are betrothed. We could break that if it's not massively relevant. And then we've got Tiramisu, who's, who's 12. She's 12. She's a genius with a Byzantine emperor. Uh, and of course, we're Catholic. So he, he's very likely to say that's a good alliance. And then we kill them all. One knife after the other, we get, uh, hopefully they get a child, and then we kill the child, and we do exactly what we did again, and then we, good God, if we could take the HRE and Byzantium without any troops of our own raised, that would be amazing. Duchess Angela is spreading around the obvious hints that she would like to befriend me. She appears to be a natural socializer and is intimidating that our shared talents in this area should naturally bring us together. Um... And it's intimating. Sorry, not intimidating. Intimating. Uh, you're not that good. Uh, maybe she is right. Oh, he's actually interested. Oh, he is actually interested. Play the character or dismiss her. Would he trust her? Again, he's not paranoid. He is deceitful. We keep her close. We find out her motivation for trying to befriend him. So you know what? We're going to do that. She's already uncovered the plot. Doesn't really matter. She'll never see it coming. Not from up there. Now, out of interest. Oh, Regent Presumptive is Savalum Carling. That's fine. Selfless. That would make a lot of sense. Very happy to see it. Um, out of interest, what's the succession looking like then? Because surely Byzantium has a different succession law. Are we still... No, we are still house seniority. Male preference agnetic cognatic. But with the designated heir of Savalum, he takes everything, right? He plays your player, eh? Yeah, no, I think he takes absolutely everything with no title loss. So that's pretty impressive. So we're just looking through our vassals list to make sure that things were things were well, you know, palms are greased because we've got a lot of money, so we might as well keep them quiet, keep them paid off. They're very greedy people. They don't seem to care that we've taken over their realm as long as they can profit from it. And what I've noticed is the Ecumenic Patriarch is our vassal. I guess that's just a, uh, that's just default. So in CK2, it was actually a landed title in um, in. Oh, so Constantinople, specifically Byzantium, counts its own county, right. 
So in uh, CK2, the Ecumenical Patriarch, uh, uh, Constantinople was like its own, um, kind of more like a regular holding where it had a bunch of sub holdings. Um, and they were mainly all cities and castles and, and shit like that. But there was a temple holding that was held by the Ecumenical Patriarch. That's not the case. He's just a, a, a titular kingdom tier title that appears to be always under us. Is there any way we can do something about that? Can I revoke his title? We can't... I mean, it's a head of a religion title, so I don't think we can really do anything about it at all. Um, grant it independent. You are at war. What if we grant him independence and then just, like, go to war? I don't really know what we can do here. He doesn't have any landed titles, so I guess keeping him vassalized is probably better. And would you look at that? We have learnt the language of the emperor. Very good. Oh, uh, the, 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 the Khan. Very good. Uh, yeah, I feel accomplished. Send him a letter. 99% chance we impress him. I think we'll do that. Honestly, I like that because it's kind of a subtle threat as well, isn't it? Writing him a letter in his own language is almost like saying, like, don't worry, we're, we're equals. It's almost like saying, I, I know exactly, yeah, I know, just know how things go. I think that's fine. Hey, you know what language you should learn, stupid? Uh, probably Greek, given where you live. <laughs> <laughs> learn language. 95% you learn the Greek language. Yes, that would be quite good. He can learn loads of languages, so no worries that we're ever going to get close to that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to kind of suggestions what I can do with the Ecumenical Patriarch, because I don't really know if there is much we can do with him, but it seems like such a good opportunity for a guy who's just sat there not doing anything, eh? Um, you have artifacts? What have you got there? Anything I could take off of you and, like, destroy just for the fun of it? He's got the old Basilius' dagger. That's a bit frightening, isn't it? Oh! This is good. We can have the Khan trampled. Very good. I like that a lot. And uh, the Mongol invasion of Carpathia. Oh, shit. Has ended. Wait, the king no longer controls any land in the target region. Oh, my God. We divided it up. Oh. How did that happen? Oh, shit. Wait. Never underestimate the power of the Oh, I collapsed it. Whoops. My mistake. That was totally by accident. <laughs> well, 17 minutes and we've caused the utter collapse of the Mongol Empire more or less accidentally. Um, well, that's good. I was going to say, because these were all these were real life successes, by the way, to... Um, to Genghis Khan, the Golden Horde, the Ilkhanate, and Chagadai Khan, all of them were, were legitimate successes to, to Genghis Khan. Obviously, Genghis Khan died bloody ages ago, but that's fine. Um, cool. They may not be weak, but they no longer stand united behind a single universal ruler. And this is about the time when they'll all fall apart, particularly because now we can say, um, Khan Buddha here, we can just say, uh, die, and then your land's all divided up, because he's got a lot of duchy titles here, and then we just do that over and over and over, splinter them, Oh my god, you've just put Jerusalem back on the menu. Don't do that. This guy has a lot of sons, and that'll be your first mistake. Let's get rid of him, then. I would rather kill the one that's directly got... Oh, the only one that's got a border with us right now. The White Horde provide a nice buffer as well for the HRE. Between them and the Golden Horde, which ended up being quite powerful. Or at least quite expensive. Yeah, no, they are, they are far more powerful. Interesting. I love your hat. Well, that was unexpected. Um, You know the doors where I was saving for a marriage to the HRE? Turns out the rather disgusting Emperor Guillem of Francia wishes to marry her. It's not that bad. There's only a 56-year age gap, which is pretty pretty reasonable. I'm going to say no, because I, I need her for... Is that Hagrid? I need her for... For unifying Rome, which I think is a reasonable reason to not marry a daughter off to Francia. Then we'll restore... Ironically, I think we're probably going to be restoring Charlemagne's borders uh, the, as the very final thing. Of all the emperors in Europe, that's going to be the, probably the last one that we that we mess around with. Ooh, you know what we should do? We should have a look at our Byzantine court because I haven't looked at it yet. And more importantly, we should be able to hold court here in... Ooh, would you look at that? I've seen this in real life. It didn't look quite as nice. There was a lot of scaffolding up when I was there. Uh, well, this is nice, huh? Wowee, this is very, very fancy. Whoa. I like this a lot. And we've got all of our fancy stuff on display. I had it dragged over from Sicily. <laughs> I love the idea that he personally drags it through the throne room. <laughs> Scraping against the floor. That's good. 
It doesn't look as impressive. Um, the throne of Charlemagne doesn't look that impressive when you actually see it up close. It looks actually hideously uncomfortable. You need a footstool or something. Oh, this is good. So everything's pretty much the same, right? We could consider Warlight Court, something like that, for the next character. And actually, it would make a lot of sense because we don't necessarily want an entry court, I don't think. Core language. You know, I would love to swap it over to Latin eventually. So we'll just keep with what we've got for now. This is fine. We're effectively speaking French over in Byzantium, which is like, it's a bit weird given that obviously this guy hasn't lived in France and his, even like his great, great grandfather hadn't lived in France at that point because we've been like Sardinia all this time. But it's, it's kind of an interesting carryover of the dynasty that they've, that they've kept speaking this, this language of their own. Okay, uh, honestly, I'm fine with how things are. We don't need to touch any of this stuff. I'm just interested in looking around. I guess we'll hold court then. Sure. Let's see what happens. Yeah, no, find me when that's available. Sitting on the throne, I gesture for my guards to open the doors of the hall. A stream of people file in, some lining up in the front of the throne, while others move out of the way so they can observe the proceedings. Our first petitioner. It's Hughes. I propose a cadastral survey of all the counties you own. Improved knowledge and mapping of your land will certainly increase its prosperity. Good idea. Take nutcates in tiramisu. Let's, let's get that sorted out. That seems like a great idea. 1,500 gold. Shit the bed. The, I love our crusader knight we've got there. Your court jester and knight. Oh. Fearless <laughs> maniac. Yeah, he does He does infer that, doesn't he, from the way he's dressed. Just dress for the job you want. Which in this case is apparently fearless maniac. Yeah, no, honestly, take him. Shit, that's expensive. One of the guards approached me. It's Philippos. I caught Philippos here in the process of sending sensitive information to foreign spies in Al-Andalus. What should we do with him? Um, off with his head. Or, I forgive once, but do not betray me again. This man is an intrigue character. Obviously, he would want that manipulation over the man, and I think that's a good idea. My vassal Archon Marco approaches me laughing like he often does. My lord, I have a brilliant idea. How about we host a fair or perhaps even a festival for the common folk? It'll cost money, but I'm sure it'll help foster a more positive relationship. That is a fantastic idea. Shall we hold a big festival celebrating both of the cultures? Sardino French and Serbians increased by 20%. Oh, host a small Serbian fair. No, I want to help. It's supposed to be, I'm supposed to be doing it for Greece. No, I can't afford to spend the resources on that one. If it was a, a Greek, Sardino, French, uh, culture, you know, cultural exchange, that would be a bit more reasonable. Now, let's trim this uh, snaggled branch of the family tree. Bon bon appétit. Then he is dead. I had to do this. I had to do this. Goodbye. I was four stress. The man had got four stress for killing his own grandchild. He's a little bit upset because the kid had potential. But at the same time, he could have had a little bit too much potential. Chaos does not an empire make. Goodbye, little, little child. Okay. Shall we start dismantling uh, some of these other hordes? I'm so worried about Chagadai over there. I'm not worried about the Black Horde over in India. That's not really my prerogative right now. Mongolia is just minding its own business. I think the Golden Horde could do with being knocked down a peg. What's the line of succession? Can't, can't, we've got to be careful that we don't divide the Khans back into the other Khans. We don't, we, we've got to be careful we don't prune so much that the family tree reconvenes, much as we did with, of course, the Byzantine Empire. So we'll kill this guy, for sure. Get two of them knocked down. Shockingly, we did not win the war against Sultan Samuel the Cruel. Terrible. It was ruining everything over there. Unbelievable. Bloody Pope. <laughs> like, every single Holy War that he's launched, every single Crusade that he's launched, he's failed, unless we've directly been involved. If only you paid me more for the privilege of living in Rome. The latest work of my acquaintance, Duchess Catronide, I think, has become all the rage of The peace details, the memory, and what we leave behind, and he's dedicated it to me. She's dedicated it to me. The memory of an emperor. What man does not hope to rest when tired, in glorious memory, with hearts desired? And when their final hour nears, their name lives on, on the lips of their peers. That is actually tremendous. That is actually the first ever poem I've heard in this game that I haven't immediately wretched at the thought of. Ah. His wife is an apprehensive woman, and as I find myself in her company, I'm at first wary. However, I soon realize she's not as averse to my company as I thought. Please, my friend, tell me about yourself. <laughs> oh, who is this? My daughter-in-law. Who, who is this? Oh, Limes Arabicus' child. Oh my god, genius, and consecrated blood, because on his mother's side, HRE. 
Hang on. How far is Almerberger down the line in succession? You see what I'm getting at here? Probably very far, because it's elective, right, in the HRE. Um, male preference, house seniority, bollocks. We would be killing hundreds of people if we were trying to get her on the line then. In fact, her son would come in line before her, if I'm not mistaken. But he's only just been born, so we'd have to kill a lot of sons. Jesus. Um... Yeah, no, I think I'm actually okay. It's a shame I can't just hover over and be like, you know, what's the, what's the line for, for succession here? Um, well, hold on. Slavabor's in line. But it is house seniority. That makes taking the HRE really, really, really hard. Because even if we marry... Oh, shit, this, this plan might not work. Because even if we get Slavabor on the throne, and if he has a son... The problem is it's just going to bounce to an older brother or an uncle or something like that. So it's 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 going to be impossible to try and inherit it as we did with Byzantium. So I don't really know what I would do there. Um, that will be tremendously difficult to do. Particularly because, uh, you know, say you're in a normal playthrough, you'd be Byzantium. You'd go for the HRE. You could holy war them. But in this case, we don't get that... <laughs> <laughs> we don't get that privilege because we're both Catholic, so I'm not really sure how we would do this. Um, leave it with me. I'm sure there's a way we could do... We could take some swaths of land, even if we just marry into the particular kingdoms. Uh, that all depends on Crown Authority. If Crown Authority is low enough, we could inherit the kingdom slowly and just kind of absorb them over time. That wouldn't hurt. Obviously, taking Croatia would be a big step because then we're directly neighbors with them. Well, we're already neighbors, to be fair, but... Yeah. Let me think about that. Uh, can I see his crown authority from... Is there a way to see that from, from here? View election. My grandson's there. Oh, would you look at that? I was going to say I thought it was elective. So is it success... It's, it's seniority succession. Oh, interesting. But they vote... No, it's not seniority at all. The seniority is totally irrelevant. It is just princely elective. Why? How, where did I read seniority then? Am I going insane? Uh, succession, male preference, house seniority. Right, but of course the HRE is always princely elective, right? How odd. I guess if they if they held a title that wasn't there, it would obviously default to um, house seniority. Okay, I don't think there's much we can do about that then. Hmm, unless... Somehow get a matrilineal marriage, get a child that's really good. And then just hope it's elective, and then we... Yeah, but even then, even if we kill the, kill the child, we could claim... All we've got to really do is get a claim, right? So we wouldn't be able to do what we did here with, with the murders. If we could just get one of our house on the throne of the HRE, that's, that's all we need. Because then we just do a house claim, and then we just war for the whole thing. At which point, I think we'd win it. Okay, sorry, this is going to take a lot more brain power than I've currently got access to. What we've got to do is get a member of our house on the throne. How would we get a matrilineal marriage with you? In fact, all we would need to do is just get a child that was in line at some point. Because, look, he's not necessarily going to take it. He's currently just going to be elected. He's got a claim because his father was emperor. So if we're able to get... Even, like, this guy married to a carling matrilineally, they have a kid... This guy's the emperor. We push that kid's claim on the HRE. It's an implicit claim, actually. Hmm, maybe there is a way we could do this. Let me, th let me think about that. There's going to be something I've, I've got to put a bit more brain power to. I'll, I'll, I'll do some looking around between episodes and, and take a look here. The Castrata completed. Very good. Um, development progress in every held county increased by 50. That's not that impressive, to be fair. That's really not that impressive at all. Bit of a waste of cash. It's just development that's the, that's up to the next development rank, right? Development growth. That was development growth, not like development, because that would be insane. What we can do just to increase our chance at the very bare minimum is... Oh, she's a carling. Oh, is she now? Um, I didn't even realize. <laughs> I didn't even realize. I was just killing her for a laugh. Um, yeah, no, what we've got to do is just try and marry... Uh, as many people into this dynasty matrilineally as possible, because these guys have been in charge forever, and they probably will be forever. 
They've got such a massive dynasty. We just got to marry as many matrilineally or patrilineally. Uh, sorry, matrilineally in our favor or, of course, patrilineally in our favor. Um, so that we can. So that we can try and just, just, just get as many Carlings out there as possible in the hopes that eventually one of the election goes in our favor. So, um, if we can go matrilineal grand marriage with it like that, they would just accept that. They don't give a shit. Why don't you care about that? I'm so bizarre. That's so strange. Opinion of... Oh, because everybody loves, of course, uh, can only the devil. Grand wedding is promised. We don't even need the bloody grand wedding. Man, he is just, like, so up for it, no matter what. I guess it's a very, very powerful ally, right? Um... In that case, he wouldn't he wouldn't accept his son getting matrilineally married, would he? Because then we kill his son, and then we kill the son's kids, and these kids that of his will be very high up in the in the elective. Because he would probably vote for his own child, right? Or would he more likely favor his house? I don't know. This is all the experimental stuff that I, I'm not so clear on in CK3, because I've never done anything like this in CK3 before. Either way, whether or not we've got the time to do this is another thing entirely. If we can get to whole of body and healthy, that might help us enough to get there. Um, we are going to go carefree, lower a little bit of stress. Maybe know thyself we be better, because then we can know, okay, we'll kind of waste our time doing this. We're going to train for a tournament. Can he get strong at his age? Is he fighting Savalon? Really does put him into perspective a little bit. It makes, it, it makes Canoli look so pathetic, but we know where the power is. 100% chance it's successful, and you just increase your prowess. No chance of failure. You gotta remember, Cannoli was a bit of a sword beast in his in his day. It's only his old age that slowed him down. He was actually very, very, very high prowess. And I think it's time for a new epic. And we've got just the lady in court who can help us out with that. And hopefully just enough money. Uh, obviously, we're always gonna go renowned for this. I don't see why we would do anything else. I mean, all these characters are gonna be about glory for the dynasty at this point, right? Well, let's keep going. On the plus side, look, we didn't achieve much anywhere today. Uh, but we did... I say that. We we had a massive achievement, but it was very early on in the form of destroying the entire Mongol Empire in one well-placed assassination, which was totally, totally blindsided me. You learn Greek. That's very good. That's actually super helpful and will cement us without having to send gifts and stuff like that. To my liege, I have read parts of your new family epic, and I'm shaken by how it ignores the contributions of my own forebears. It is a dishonor of the last straw. It's clear you carry nothing but ill will. Signed, Ecumenical Patriarch, Apollyonus of the Ecumenical Patriarch. Uh, this guy's clearly not happy about us being a foreign pretender here in Byzantium. Um, I apologize. Your family will be included. No. He becomes your rival. Oh, I like that. Oh, what's another ecumenical patriarch dead, huh? Um, yeah, sure. This guy killing two ecumenical patriarchs in this small span of, like, a few years is kind of silly. But that's fine. Let's just stop pissing him off. I mean, the last one did nothing wrong. We just burnt him in a, in a house fire. Plush, vibrant, and as soft as the first light of dawn, we're going to give him a carpet. Not that we needed to give him a carpet. No, oh, I suspect something's off. Well, it doesn't matter either way. He's still going to die. And here we are, the second most powerful Khan going in the bin. Very nice. Must have been something he ate. How surprising. Has that divided them up? Uh, they've lost a few troops, but it's actually nothing, nothing major. In fact, I think this guy just grabbed some of his land. Fair enough. Okay, that's fine. As long as we are just keeping them like on their toes a little bit, not giving them enough time to re-cement themselves, I think that's a fair. I think that's fair enough. Um. Oh, the Carlingi Chronicon. Very nice. It's fucking terrible. Somebody pointed out this before that, that you spent like two thousand five hundred gold on an artifact that gives zero point one prestige per month. But to be fair, we're not doing it for that. We are doing it for purely the renown, right? Because it's such a nice consistent boost to getting that next legacy. Even then, it's still going to take a long time to get there, huh? Thank you. Continue to serve me honorably, madam. Much obliged. Hello. Um, would you prefer a browsing game of tabula? I would. I'd love to be able to speak. You've got me a real disadvantage here, my friend. I think I'm going to go... Hear me out here. I'm going to go intrigue, intrigue. I'm going to go intrigue. I think I'm probably going to go intrigue. And then I'm going to uh, cheer. An excellent match. Well done. And now... Richwara Gudeskuchi Kalingenberg Kapla dies. And in her place, cheers, Richwara. In her place, the Emperor's son gets a new wife. Which they are more than happy to matrilineally marry. Or uh, maybe not. Even if we use a hook, we wouldn't even get close. Yeah, I don't know why I'm surprised at that, but. 
think I want this anyway. Oh no, we get an alliance with the HRE. Keep them, keep them stupid. They think, oh, we're allied. You know, you're trying to formalize our... You would never you would never do anything wrong against what is effectively going to become his own family. He surely never would. That's a great point. That's a great idea. Um, Who was the next in line? Because the second in line was like, hell yeah, I will marry your family member matrilineally. So I guess we'll just go back to that plan then. It was you, right? It was your... Was it your son? I don't even remember. When did you marry her? We're going to kill her. I swear I killed his wife before. We're going to kill her. Oh, I did, didn't I? She was a car like. We're going to kill her and we're going to go back to the original plan then. It was worth taking a look. I was very skeptical that it would work, but I'm glad, I'm glad we did take a, take a peek. In fact, if the only limiting factor is the... Uh, if the only limiting factor here is the, the primary heir not being allowed to matrilineally marriage, then we would just go through every other heir in line and make sure that they all have carling children. And then eventually, eventually we are going to get a dynasty member on this throne just by pure numbers. Then we just claim it as dynasty head because they're not going to get more troops than us. We claim that as dynasty head and then we just put it in our pocket as we did with Byzantium. A troubling translation. Well, that's just terrible, isn't it? Um, we'll help you translate. Don't worry, my friend. Hello. Um, who are you? Yeah, sure. God knows who this man is. I've never seen him before in my life. But, and another perp. Bloody hell, that one was fast. We've got some good events this time. Time between men's back is plus three years. Uh, I guess we'll just go for this one. Go for know thyself next. Oh, dear. The wilderness can be such a dangerous place for a, for an ecumenical patriarch in these dangerous times. Oh, no, the bandits were slain. Can I just say, I was, I was thinking about this earlier before I started recording, that the statistical likelihood of this man having committed, and it's not just about the murders. Think about the amount of plots that we've launched and got away with. The murders, of course, being the big part, but the amount of attempted murders and everything else that would just be a horrendous offense. We've only been caught twice, and we've killed 49 people. That's so... Actually, no, it's actually... Uh, no, it, it, it's right. If we've killed 49 people, we've been caught twice. That's, uh... Oh, no, that is incredibly low, isn't it? Shit. I'm no statistician. Is that the right word? I don't deal with statistics here. Look, if it's a 5% chance per kill that you could potentially be caught, you'd say on average once every 20 kills you're caught. We've been caught twice in 49. So we are slightly... We are slightly above the, uh, you know, the 5%. But you've, again, you've got to consider that's just in murder plots. So we're doing pretty well for ourselves. We're doing very, very well. And, and he's had absolutely no meaningful side effects of any of the plots he has been revealed. His secrets. And, I, like, nobody's found any of the secrets. And I do genuinely believe a big part of that is the second people find secrets on us, getting rid of them. <laughs> so we just nailed it. And, of course, his massive intrigue and all the defense and whatever else. Hello. My son Moran came to me today that complaining what Martha was bullying him. Um, Just, like, like... Uh, like kicker though, just like throw her in the throw her in the ocean. Arbitrary seems good. A dog dealer. Ooh, a good scent hound is worth its weight in gold. Hello. Diplomacy learning. Uh, a beast hound gives us martial prowess. Um, we could ask this guy to just simply run my kennels. Um, is he any good? No, he's not. Uh, yeah, sure, we'll take a scent hound, and then. As maintenance work on my mansion in Byzantium continues, a group of laborers has found springing from the ground beneath the walls a graceful handle. After further digging, it's a it's killed that it was once attached to a vase, and now dozens of pieces of pottery that disseminate the area. Byzantium has centuries long past that is known, but these vases are everywhere, and they'll slow down the works. What should be done? Should we store them in a public chamber? We lose uh, 450 gold, but we increase the development progress by 30. Or we say, what handle? So the ruin is indestructible, but not further any decay. If we can't see any of anything about the ruins, I have, I'm getting like half the experience here. Fine. Just all them in a public chamber. Is the implication here that we are... Ooh, we get to name this dog. I'm going to name you... Lucifer. What a great name. Uh... Oh. A grandmother of all. An old woman has passed away in Cagliari. She will be sorely missed. Yes, she will. Where is that again? Remind me. Anyway, sorry. Yes, no, I'm trying to look at this. So we can't actually... Bruh. 
<laughs> a son. Arno Carling is a bastard, but he is genius, and he is a uh, comely. So he's definitely her son. Please don't leave an angry comment about how silly that was. Uh, look, 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 look. What I'm trying to figure out what, what the hell we can do here. So, Constantinople again. Order procession decisions can be taken no cost. Again, I, we're missing that tab, so I can't do anything. Oh, it's a real shame. Because I don't know what the hell's doing it. I've taken apart... Maybe I'll go through the mod list again now that we definitely have, like, a ruin as our capital. And then we can, um, we can kind of go from there. Take a look, see what caused it to pop up again. But maybe it's just, like, a save bug at this point. Who knows? So, we can we even upgrade anything? We can upgrade that. I feel like we might as well spend this money on bloody something, eh? I mean, overall, it's going to be a slow time because all of the kind of tasks that I would be wanting to do with this character are just so impossible to, to get to at this point in time with the, with, the, with the remaining life of this character. So, I think we'll set up some long-term plans. And you know what? If they work, they work. Beatrix Carling, again, they're happy to do it. The children will be born into house Carling. Your son can die, and then we'll clear the way for, again, Carling replacements to start being built up very slowly here. Who else are we killing next? We're killing you. Then this guy's already got um, two sons, which will have to be killed. Again, it's male preference. We've only got to kill, like, three people in total just to set this guy up as well. He's a duke, so he actually might be more reluctant, but given that he already has two sons, he might be less reluctant in that regard because he's already got... Very nice. There we are. Um, he's already got heirs, so we might not care so much about a matrilineal marriage. For the 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 alliance might be worth more to him than that particular risk. Um, what about my granddaughter? To you, matrilineally, he will not accept. Yeah, again, that's the problem with him being a duke, right? I thought he might be up for it a little bit more given this this situation, but that's okay. Um, okay, so moving on, then we're looking for kind of unlanded people in line to the HRE, Prince Peter. We got very lucky with that. Maybe the, maybe a count would be more up for it. I love just killing people's wives to see if these things will work. I wait patiently on the throne for the arrival of Archon Trianos, who soon announced an usher before me. Ah, oh, he's practiced the language. Humorously changing their meaning and leaving my courtiers in stifling tears. You know what? You tried. It's not an easy language. Congratulations. Thank you, my friend. Totally got this round under just our thumb, haven't we? They've all just, like, fallen into line immediately. Well, let's sort by opinion. What's, like, the lowest opinion we've got here? Oh, my God. It's a Marmite situation. Oh, it's not even a Marmite situation. That means it does, like, they love us or they hate us. It's not even that. It's the fact that they pretty much all just love us. Even the ecumenical patriarch were winning over there. So, like, God damn it, you're a heathen, but you're a respectable heathen with a lot of money to give me. <laughs> I wish there was something I could do for him, like, give him some land. And then, like, yeah, but even then, what am I going to do? Vassalize him? I've already got him fucking vassalized. I just, I just got to, I've got to think of something to do here. Anyway, we'll keep going with the very, very slow and honestly very heavily luck-based HRE plot. Because the kids have got to come out. They've got to come out with a good education. They've got to make friends. They've got to make too many, can't make too many enemies because it's all, of course, elective. And we have absolutely no sway over the elections. It might just be a case of wars with Savalon, but we'll see how it goes. Honestly, thank you for joining me today. It's, it, it is going to be a much slower time now because we've, we've peaked. Where the hell do you go from here, huh? And I think it could be uh, it could be worth having a few slow episodes just to stay on top of things for a little while. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow. Come up with a better game plan, I think.